Hello, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Juan Toscano, and today I'm going to review a paper titled Deep Learning, an Inverse Discovery of Polymer Self-Consistent Field Theory, Inspired by Physics in Form Neural Networks. As a brief introduction, uh, well, the polymer self-consistent field theory uh, is used in material sciences to characterize the phase diagram of polymeric systems. And what we want to do that for several reasons, for instance, when we want to understand the polymer behavior, when we want to predict some processing conditions, or when we want to design new materials. In general, and this problem is tackled using numerical approximations. However, if you want high accuracy and high resolution, this problem becomes a computationally expensive. Moreover, the inverse prediction with numerical methods is not so straightforward because it requires trial and error which increases the computational cost. Uh, so after this problem, the authors proposed using a variation of the physics informed neural networks to deal with the equation uh, directly. Okay, so let's see the problem set up and the authors analyze these one dimensional polymer systems and they will find how the local distribution of the polymers change along this 1D spatial domain. And we'll have two cases. The first one is these three homopolymers and they'll have N segments of the same kind. And for the second case will be these AB block copolymers and you will see that we have FN segments of polymer A and one minus FN segments of polymer B. Now let's see how the authors deal with this problem. Uh, well, they use this polymer self-consistent field theory to find the local distribution of the polymer chains. Uh, the general idea is that the self-consistent chemical potential field modulates the local distribution of the chain. So if you know it, you can use it to define how your chains propagate along your, in this case, your 1D domain. Uh, this is a uh, field theoretic approach that uh, satisfies the minimum free energy, which is good because they, it means that the problem is constrained, but it can become tricky when you have multiple free energy, which is what exactly happens for this case, and we're going to see how they tackle that. All well, this process can be viewed as a modified uh, diffusion equation. The natural size of the chain defines the, the diffusivity of the segments. Okay, here you can see that these modified diffusion equations uh, relate this uh, chemical potential with the a partial partition functions and this partial partition function for component A and B will change along the position and well, both of them will be related with each other through this total partition function. Uh, the output, one of the outputs of this study will be to identify the volume fraction and here's what we can see here. And this whole process will be constrained by uh, the self consistent of chemical potential. And you can see here that we have this Fourier Huygens interaction parameter, which is one of the things we are going to try to get in the for the inverse problem. And we will also going to subject this to some initial conditions. We will say that at the beginning of the domain, remember this one D domain, we'll have only one component, and in the end of the domain, we'll have only the other component. And we also will apply some periodic boundary conditions. Okay, now we have a set of equations. We have a set of constraints. And we will, you can try to solve it using a physics-informed neural network. One of the key concepts required to understand a physics-informed neural network is that a neural network by itself is a function that has an extraordinary capability to approximate to any other function, something similarly like a polynomial. And if we recall in a polynomial to fit two functions, we modify the polynomial coefficients. Well, in this case, it's similar. Uh, well, here you can see that the actual form of the neural network is nothing more than a a set of linear transformations linked by some nonlinearities, and these nonlinearities are, are called as activation functions. So, to feed the data, we will try to find at the, the these w's and these p's that are referred as network parameters, and the network will learn these network parameters by minimizing a loss function in a trial and error process. And this uh, loss function is nothing more than the approximation error. Uh, for instance, let's assume that we want to know the height of the son based on the height of the mother and the height of the father. Uh, so initially, uh, the model will assign some random values. Let's say here that he assigned that the weight here should be 2 and the bias should be 0.1. So you can see that when we compute the actual, the predictor is 6.7 meters, but the actual height of the sun is 165. So uh, you see, we see that we have a negative error. And since we have a negative error, the model will know that 
uh, you have to reduce the value. So now it says that, okay, I'm gonna give it 0.1 and now the error is positive and they will go back and forth, back and forth until they find the right parameters. Okay, so, but what are physics informed neural networks? So, well, neural networks is just a neural network that approximates the solution of a partial differential equation. It's a neural network that follows the rules set by a partial differential equation. Um, but how do we make it do that? And the idea is that since they are essentially functions, uh, we can obtain its derivative. So let's assume that we approximate u is the approximation of the partial differential equation. So if you approximate well the solution of the partial differential equation when we obtain its derivatives, those derivatives uh, should also follow the PD. And we will include that PD as an additional loss function. And you can see that we actually have like a set of loss functions, a set of constraints that are imposed during training. For this specific case, for this self-consistent field theory, uh, is like a bit more complicated because the functions are a bit more, more complicated. So we actually cannot do it with a single neural network. We use two neural networks. The top neural networks uh, will, non neural network will approximate the partition functions and the bottom neural network will approximate the self-consistent potential fields. We will train the parameters from both uh, neural networks for both models by a set of loss functions. And these loss functions are like just the equations, the constraints that were defined by the self-consistent field theory equations. We will update, as we train the model, we'll update the network parameters by gradient descent. It's similarly to the process that I, I showed you with plus and minus, but actually this keeps track of how the gradient of the loss changes and we try to follow the global minimum. Uh, so these are the modal constraints that we covered like a few in a few slides before. So it's a modified diffusion equation that is what define what pulls the self consistent field theory. We also am assuming periodic boundary conditions. So we include these these values. Remember that or more, the more, or domain is divided between h and h. So we're assuming that everything on h series is equal to the h and the final. Uh, also some initial conditions uh, and also the chemical potential, all the equations we covered before. Okay, but what if we have multiple solutions? Uh, let's say that our constraints are a bit broad. Let's say that, for example, the, the constraints that, that x squared should be equal to four. Well, then the value of x could be plus two or minus two. But uh, if we were like in elementary school, we may be waiting for the plus two. Yeah, but how do we tell the model that, okay, I want the plus two. Well, in that case, well, we tell our model what we're expecting by some, by giving it some context. Uh, for instance, it's like if I ask you and I tell you how much is one plus one, how much is two plus two, how much is 10 by 10, how much is 20 by 20. And then after all those questions, I ask you how, what is the square root of four, then you are more, most likely to give me the two because you know that I'm asking for positive answers. And, and that's exactly what happens here. And that's an issue when we have like, multiple minimums. Uh, and the problem here is like for this AB copolymer system, they, uh, there's a metastable disorder phase that also has the local free energy minimum, but does not tell us like any any information. So so boy, the issue, how do we inform the model is like we feed some self-consistent fields that we obtain by numerical methods. And here's the way you can see here, we the, the authors feed this information to the network. They train this network. So this network learns to, to give some kind of like result that makes sense. And then once they make sense, they kind of like give the actual data. And this process is called fine tuning and transfer learning. Ah, well, that's for the forward problem. For the inverse problem, it's a bit more straightforward. The only difference is that we add an additional loss called this loss data. And uh, this loss data will be come from observations. And But now we have observations, we have PD. So what we do is like we add an additional parameter to the set of parameters of the neural network and ask our model to minimize that parameter. So uh, for example, here in this a equation, that is like just like an example, to, we see that we have this loss data and let's say that we want to identify this lambda. This lambda will become as a network parameter and we will ask our, our model to minimize that parameter too. So since the model has information, since it has data, it will find the right value for lambda. And that's exactly what, what the authors do for the second part of this of this project. And this is something important because it's a unique feature of the brain framework. If you want to do inverse problems, especially in for, with numerical methods, they recall a lot of trial and error, man, which is expensive. 
let's see the results for the forward problem. Now, well, for the homopolymer system, there's not much to say. <laughs> Everything is the same. So the volume fraction is always going to be 1. And the volume fraction distribution is always going to be 0. But OK, uh, for the AB copolymer system, the first part, remember, was pre-training the model with some known data. And here you can see that the error goes like up to the minus 4, approximately. And here are the, the what you are expecting, this, uh, these values, uh, you can see that, and here's what you actually get, and here the the dots are is what the network predicted, and you can see that they actually follow the information that that you gave it. Um, by the way, uh, they characterize the system using these two parameters, which is like remember that f this f is f n is the number of polymers a, it's like the number of a polymers you have, and this x n is a flory Hagen's a, a interaction parameter. And now, once the model knows the reference system, we can ask him new questions like, okay, what happens if I if I change something? So, so now I, they ask the set of the you know, n and the floor hanging parameters for different cases. And you can see that the pin, which once again is those red dots, and here in the volume fraction, you can see the, the, the pin gets the, the results quite well. Yeah, uh, so for the inverse problem, once again, we are going to try solving single parameters. Um, so there are there are explored parameters. The first one is will be the Flory Huggins interaction parameter. And they will fit now, they will fit some observations. And it's like the first part is the first figure. And you can see that as you move forward when the training, the model minimizes the loss. And as it minimizes the loss, identifies that the right Flory Huggins parameter for this specific case is 15. The second case, they want to explore, they identify, discover these intrinsic self consistent fields, and uh, they will fit the volume fraction distributions as known data. And when you can see that once again, the, the, the model does a pretty decent job finding, finding the, the results. In summary, uh, the author solved a 1D polymer self consistent field theory using a physically informed framework. Uh, they obtain segmental partition function and solve consistent fields mainly. Seem to avoid the multiple solutions, the local free energy, they initialize the model using these self consistent fields, uh, with, and they obtain those fields by several spectral methods. They do analyze two forward problems, homopolymers and AB copolymers, and for the inverse problems, they get back the Flory Huggins interaction parameters and predict the self consistent morphologies. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time.